the chair will stay here beside you, but we're going to turn it so it orients forward and we're going to use our strap. We can potentially use the block and all of the steps in this next tree pose are going to be optional to any of these props. So while I put down the strap, while the block is not in my way, it's not in the way of my feet, it's sitting on the chair, I want to start us with a very simple option. While you hold on to the chair, can we turn one foot out and set the sole of the foot against the other leg and the toes at the floor? This gives us an understanding that we are all so very unique. If what the pose is asking us to do, tree pose, is to open up the hip points away from each other while we engage the inner thighs toward each other, it's a balance. And the position of that turned out leg is gonna be unique to each person. Sometimes folks can turn out more. And if what you need to do to protect any hip issue, then please make the adjustment. Now, switch which leg you are warming up to and simply do the same. I have my toes at the floor, the sole of the foot against the other leg. I get to recruit the inner thigh. I want to bear into both feet. If this is your place, then we have a whole lot of action through the foundation of the body and the sense of lifting the rib cage that has to be in tree pose. That's the primary action. Let's continue. Step down. And if that is making uh, for a, a wonderful, comfortable challenge, please repeat. And if what you can explore is putting your foot in the seat of the chair or taking your foot higher into the, onto the block, please do it. And the same thing applies. We can be more lateral of the chair, right? We can open up or we can step back. We can step back and have the leg more forward. And that way the turnout is not as great. Please make this your practice. All right, regardless of what you are choosing, your feet press down and pull toward each other. Both legs bear down and pull toward each other, but you have a wider base of support now. And so you can feel how that gives you stability and might feel comfortable releasing one arm, releasing the other arm, turning the palms up, lifting, drawing back, lifting some more, very nice. And just breathe, look up. Notice your steadiness and notice how there's this constant recalibration of where you are. And that's what the trees do. And that's what we do all day long. We're reestablishing our place and release. Now it's a lot. Now, we're going to use the strap. Before we do the other side, we're going to use the strap. And we're going to keep the chair where it is. We're going to keep the orientation. And we are going to use the strap somehow at the chair. So what I'm doing is I am hooking my strap to the back of the chair. And you might not have a chance to do it at the back of your chair, you might decide you wanna hook it to the leg of the chair or to the arm of the chair. But as you do, pass it behind you and hold on. And still hold on to the chair and go right back to where you were. Again, you could prop up this way and you could go to the seat of the chair and you could go to the block, but what you had before, please. Now, bear down, pull the legs toward each other, 
And notice the push pull of the arms, the hand at the chair pushes down and into the chair and the arm with the strap pulls that gives us something more. And it's not just about what the arms are doing or how the back is more engaged. It's more about how the core, there's a lift. Does everybody notice that in their body, this push pull? So what you could do, depending on the strap, in the future, we'll add more to this. You could slide your arm to a little bit more of an extension laterally, and you can keep the arms on. Hey, how about that? I will give us a little bit of a teaser as to what comes next. <laughs> While the arms are on, where we're going in the future is to come up onto our toes. Whoo! Okay? And then very slowly to come on down. It's a lot. And step down. We want all of those things on the other side. I'm going to take my chair to the other side. And the strap is ready, but I'm going to put it down so that we can take on those two preparations in the same order. And remember, we could be here in this propped up position. It's only wonderful. Where is that knee? How much do we turn out that leg? It does count on both sides. And if where you want to explore now is in the seat of the chair or onto the block, legs bear down. They pull toward each other. We can lift our gaze. We can release the outside arm. We might be able to release both arms. It's an amazing surprise that comes from just feeling more stable in our base. Before you give this away, keep lifting the ribs. Exactly. And then step down. All right, I'm holding the strap. It goes behind me. Whether you take this on in a lower to the ground, less involved way, whether you are stepping up into the chair or even onto your block. We're bringing balance, completing the work on this side. And I had us bear down into the chair and then press out just to feel everything open through the front and the back engaged. And that is how we are designed. The back holds us, we open to life, we move forward. But if you can slide the arm along the strap a little bit further and just feel a wider wingspan behind you, a continual change in all the relationships, keep lifting your gaze. And because you're not looking down, you've changed that aspect of how you, we all typically will look down more. Then while you're here, lift up onto your toes and just notice the shifts and then come on down and settle. Beautiful. And step down. Great work, everyone. We're gonna keep the strap at the chair this way. I'm gonna put it in the chair and then uh, return the block to between my hands. And we are going to return to sitting and have shoulder opening before we finish. So. Block in hand, chair where we can count on it. Come and sit. Uh, I'm gonna encourage you to keep the block between your feet just to keep the inner thighs on, right? And then think about staying near the front edge of the chair. I'm going to catch hold the strap and catch it behind me and overhead. So let's go with this arm first. What I want to do first is to walk my hand as far down and back as possible. And if that is not comfortable, please hold it here and it would be just fine. What I don't want you to do is to take the elbow to the side. Can we keep the arm in this plane and then focus on how high, how far are we going? with that elbow up and back. The other arm presses down and back. We're gonna keep this light and comfortable for today. Exactly. 
Very good. So one arm presses back and the other one walks as far as it can to catch the strap behind. And I like using that expression, we are going to back off to do more. So we're going to slide the back hand up a little bit, maybe an inch, and it feels less involved and it feels a little bit easier, but we're gonna use that to do more. If you will now hip hinge forward and what you're actually doing is tricking the elbow back. So please pay attention to not overdoing. And then if you will lift the front of the feet. Oh, wow, we connected the work from before. And then rest your feet and inhale and come on back and switch, which is the arm above, which is the arm that is anchoring, how we press down to reach up, how we reach up to bear down and lifting your gaze. So at first I am walking my hand as far down and back along the strap as possible, trying to keep my elbow from the side, but more forward and up. And then I want to slide the hand, the top arm up along the strap, maybe an inch or so, and use this new freedom to lean in. And so we're using gravity and our weight to begin to affect the shoulder opening. The hand that pushes down is the safety net it keeps you from overdoing in your lower back. And then very slowly come on up and set it all down. You are welcome to sit back in the chair. I'm gonna let my strap just dangle. <clears throat> and as you sit back in the chair, sit comfortably, return to this mudra. Little fingers reaching actively, index finger to the thumb tip. And just feel what happens in this more open position. If your feet don't reach the floor, use the block underneath your feet. If that feels better on your back, this should be a comfortable supported place. And then again, bring your attention to your foundation first. How are you connected to the surfaces below you? And the support that comes from behind, the energy on your right and your left, the energy all around you. the sense of connectivity. Turn your palms down and rest your hands in the same mudra position on your lap in a comfortable way. Feel how your mind's eye turns more inward. Feel where your breath goes. Notice the spaciousness. Notice your right hand. Your right shoulder. Your left hand. your left shoulder. Feel the space around your heart. The space around the navel. Your right hip. Your right knee. your right foot, your left hip, your left knee, your left foot. Notice the energy over the crown of your head.
And there is great wisdom in giving attention to our inner landscape. There are many reasons for it. Many benefits. But one that is continually drawing my attention for all of us together is that we cannot heal what we cannot feel. So we need to be present in our bodies to appreciate what we can do and to be empowered by that. It gives us attention to the detail of how to take care where we need to back off and be careful. It gives us attention to the places that don't come into our focus that deserve and need our attention. But overall, it keeps us at home in our body. Bring your hands to your heart. Thank you for sharing your beautiful selves. Namaste, everyone.